Hey Weavers, this is Deborah from Yarninvasions.com and I want to show you how you can warp your loom. If you'll take a look at this project right here, I have it set for a small project like a pot holder, but the process is the same whether you're using a large loom or a small loom. I've just used this adjustable loom to make mine here. Now normally I put my poles in after I've warped my loom, but this helps you see which nails I'm going to be using and how far my project is and it really won't be a problem. So I'm going to start here with this fabric strip. Um, I'm going to be twining, so I won't see the color of the warp after I twine over it, except for at the very top and the very bottom. As you can see here, I used a blue, a dark blue for the warp. If you want the warp to be invisible, you should use the same color to warp that you do to weave. So if I'd used the green to warp, then you wouldn't have seen it or really noticed it. So my fabric strips are cut to one and a quarter inch and I use one and a quarter inch for my warp and for my weaving or my weft. They're all pre-cut and I put holes at the ends so they're already ready because I don't want to stop and use my scissors and cut it. But if, I, if they weren't, I would fold up the end and snip a little bit here to get this nice little slit. Some people like to round the corners of their strips so the knot is a little bit smaller, but that's up to you. So here we go. I like to start with a slip knot because then there's no tail at the beginning to weave in at the end of your project. So let's take a look. So I would start with a slip knot and maybe have an inch or two uh, left and have a nice size tail so that you can weave around the tail every row and that'll be locked in place and you won't have to sew it in at the end. So let's talk about how you can make a slip knot. You're going to want a nice size tail to begin with. I like to go around two fingers and kind of make an X and then push it under that strand and then pull it to make a nice little knot. Do we need to see that one more time? So start with a nice size tail. I go around two fingers, kind of make an X and go under or through the middle from the back. Okay, I'm gonna tighten that up. This tail is a little bit short. I probably would have redo it and make it a little bit longer, but for demonstration, that's, that'll be fine. You put the slip knot on the top. When you're actually weaving, you're going to weave over both of these as if they were two individual strands, and that locks this strand into your project, and it won't, uh, the tail won't come out. If you weave around both of them together, then it won't get locked in on your weaving, and when you pull it off, this will slip down and you'll have to find it and pull it back and sew it in place or whatever. So weave around both of them as if they're separate things. When you get to the knot, you just weave around it as if it's one. When you get to the tail, you weave around the tail and that strand as if it's one and the pull. All right, starting at the first nail, come down to the first nail at the bottom, go around that one. Then go back to the top and grab the next nail, the bottom of the next nail and you'll continue going top to bottom, grabbing all these nails. Now I have these hooks set here from previous projects. I'm just gonna ignore them as if they aren't there. Keep on warping. Now I'm near the end, I need to add a strip. So I happen to have another strip ready. It doesn't have to be the same color because I'm twining and it'll disappear. If you plain weave, like going over one and under one as you're weaving, then you'll see the warp strands and it'll make a difference. You're going to really use the color that you want to see. I have my old one. I'm going to take my new strip and put the holes over top of each other. I'm going to get the other end of the new strand. I'm going to go up behind or under the old one and then the new one and then pull it through all the way until it knots up. Okay. This is going to make a knot that you're going to see here as you're warping, but you won't see after you weave because you're going to weave right over the knot and it'll disappear. Okay, so let's see where I was. Continue warping top to bottom. Here we are. We're down at the end. And I'm going to put another slip knot because I don't want to weave in a tail if I can avoid it. Okay, so now that it's here, two fingers out is what I like to go around. Go around the two fingers, make an X, and push it up from behind. 
Now this one's a little harder to get the exact size or the exact spot. This one doesn't leave much space, so I want the knot a little bit higher up. You need to make that knot pretty snug. All right, so that's enough for me to weave around both of those. And then I would probably tuck this tail here. I will weave each one of these part of the slip knot separately. Weave around the knot once you get to that as if it's one. And then weave around the tail and this first strand as if it's one with the pole. And that keeps it nice and straight. So that's how you warp it. Some people want to know, well, how tight do you need to make the warp? You need to have some play or some give. Once you start weaving, that's going to really get kind of tight. You don't want to be too tight when you're trying to weave the whole project. But you don't want to, you don't need it so loose that they're kind of sagging in the middle. So I like to press them to see if I have a little bit of give. And I do. It should be a tiny bit springy. So that's how you warp a twining loom. And you can start weaving up here. Happy weaving!